Welcome back everyone. Today we're talking about L parsing, which is a way to parse some CFG grammars. So, so far in the course, we've focused on lexing and parsing, and I want to give you a small summary of what we've seen so far. So for lexing, we have given the example of regular expressions, which we can use to implement lexing. And regular expressions are similar to context-free grammar, which are typically used for parsing, in that they're both part of Chomsky hierarchy and they use the same kind of semantics based on derivations. Now we've seen how to implement a regular expression or regular languages, how to parse them using a deterministic finite automaton. That was a few videos ago. On the parsing side, besides CFG, we've also talked about PEG, parsing expression grammars. And we've seen that PEG are recognition based. Notably, we emphasize the difference from CFG that is caused by the single parse rule. So when you have a choice in PEG, there's only one correct answer based on the input. But we've also seen how PEG can be implemented as top-down recursive descent parsers, and we've implemented some of these parsers by hand. What we haven't done so far, however, is this part here. We haven't said how we can actually parse context-free grammars. We're going to do this in this video and the next, and the algorithms that we're going to see are the LL and LR parsing algorithm. Something interesting about these algorithms is that these are not fully general CFG parsing algorithms. These are algorithms that can only parse some CFGs. And I will explain why it is the case that we're not seeing general parsing algorithms. So to understand why we are seeing these imperfect, in a sense, algorithms, it's important to have some historical perspective. So Chomsky proposes hierarchy of languages and grammars in the mid 50s. The algorithm we're going to see, LL and LR, were formalized in the mid or late 60s. And I put formalized in italics because probably people at the time were writing parsers by hand that were doing similar things. Maybe not totally similar, but fairly similar. At the time, computers looked something like this. So this is a computer from the 50s, and this is a computer from uh, 71. It's an IBM mainframe. Actually, those are computers that use processors, but not microprocessors. Those were uh, also introduced in the early 70s. And the first microprocessor was the Intel 404. So I've compared the 404 with the AMD Zen, which is a recent processor. And so you see that the 404 has about 2,000 transistors, and the Zen has almost 5,000 million transistors. The clock speed also went up uh, more than four times. So it's quite a leap. It's, there's a uh, 8 million performance difference. It's probably more complicated than that, but you can imagine the scale of things. So at the time, the idea to parse all CFGs in ON cubed was completely laughable. It's way too slow. The solution then is to only handle the ON subset of context-free grammars. And for programming languages, that is very practical can al almost always come up with a grammar for a language that is linear in practice. For linguistics, which remember, Chomsky is a linguist, he's not a computer scientist. For linguistics, the ON cubed parsing algorithm might be practical. Not only do we want something that is theoretically effective in the sense that there is a linear bound, but we also want a practically efficient implementation. So that means mostly using efficient data structures and in particular direct array access, because that's very fast and no backtracking. So LL parsing, what is it? Well, first, what does LL mean? The first L is for left to right, and that's just the direction in which we process the input. There also exist right to left parsing algorithms, but they're quite exotic and not often used. The second L stands for leftmost derivation, and derivation here and derivation here is the kind of derivation that we saw when we were talking about the semantics of CFG. In this context, leftmost derivation means that we are always going to expand the left non-terminal first. I put a little example here to clarify. You have a grammar, and we're going to expand A into its definition. Then we're going to expand capital B into small b, and then we're going to expand capital C into small c. This is a leftmost derivation because we expanded B, so the non-terminal on the left, before C. At this point, you should get a question. And the question is, okay, but leftmost derivation is something we saw in the context of semantics. 
It's a way to obtain the language that is defined by the grammar. Here, we are talking about parsing. And in parsing, we always start with the input. And we want to see if it matches the language. In this context, what it means to simulate leftmost derivation is that the left non-terminal are going to be matched first. And to understand this, I will add some information. The L parsing algorithm is a top-down recursive descent parser. So just like PEG, you can implement them as a set of functions. So say there's a function to parse A, this function is going to call a function to parse B and a function to parse C, and it will call the function to parse B first. If it calls the function to parse B first, that means that B will be recognized first, which is the same thing as saying that we simulate a leftmost derivation. This is all that it means here. So LL parses a subset of context-free grammar. Which subset is that? Well, for this, you need to understand how LL handles choices. So remember that a peg parser handles choices by trying every choice alternative in order and then picking the first one that match. A LL parser does not even do that. It only picks a single alternative. And to decide which alternative it will pick, it will use a sort of oracle, which is based on a look ahead of K tokens. K is a constant that is decided before you create the parser. And usually K will be one. In the rest of the presentation, I might assume that it's always one. So it looks at uh, this first token and uses that to decide which choice to explore. And that causes it to never backtrack. So this is restrictive because it means if you have a choice, all the choice alternatives need to start by a different token. They can never start by the same token. Otherwise, the LL parsing algorithm cannot decide. And therefore, this grammar will not be a LL grammar. So from today's perspective, you can say it's a worse peg. It's strictly worse than a peg because it accepts less languages. Uh, the languages for which it's fast, a peg will also be fast. However, it does two things for you. It guarantees that the grammar will be ON. If the grammar is accepted by the LL parsing tool, it means it's ON. That grammar will also be ON peg parser, but the peg parsing tool will also accept grammars that are not ON. The second thing which is more interesting is that the LL parser can be implemented via a very efficient table-based lookup. So you will take the first token and you use that token to look up in a table which choice alternative you should use. Let's look at some properties of LL parsing. Just like peg parsers, LL parsers are top-down recursive descent parser. The only difference is that LL parsers are optimized in the sense that you will use the look-ahead tokens to decide which choice alternative to use, and so they will not try choice alternative in order. Just like peg parsers, L parsers cannot handle left recursion, because that would cause infinite recursion in the top-down parser. Just like peg, they are unambiguous by construction. Unlike peg, they do not suffer from language hiding. And that's less good than it sounds. So this grammar has language hiding in peg, because all the A's will be consumed by repetition, and there will be no A left for this one here. However, uh, LL does not have this issue because this grammar is not a LL grammar. The reason why it's not a LL grammar is that LL will not be able to decide whether to repeat on the A or to just match empty and then match the A to the last item here. The LL formalism is less expressive than either CFG or PEG. In fact, it's less expressive than any grammar formalism that we shall see in this course except regular grammars. It is notably less expressive than LR, which we shall see in the next video. So I want to clarify the vocabulary a little bit, because I've been talking about LL parsers, LL languages, LL grammars. Uh, what does it all mean exactly? So LL grammar is a grammar for which you can generate an LL parser. If you give it to the LL parsing tool, you will not get any first-first or first-follow conflicts. An LL language, on the other hand, is a language that has a LL grammar. It may have many grammars, in fact. A language is a set of sentences, so it, there might be multiple grammar that define the same language. And some of these grammars might not be LL grammars. That's fine. To be an LL language, it suffices that a LL grammar for the language exists. So if you feed a grammar to a LL parsing tool, if the grammar is LL, 
the tool will be very happy and it will generate a parser for you. However, if you feed it a grammar that is not LL, the tool will tell you this grammar is not LL and it will explain to you why. The way it will explain it to you is that it will give you one of these two messages. So either it will say there is a first first conflict. And a first first conflict happens when you have a choice that starts with the same k token. So here for k equal one, this would cause a first first conflict because both choice alternative start with a. The other kind of conflict that might be reported is a first follow conflict. This happens when there's two choice alternative and one of them can start by a token and the other one is empty, but the non-terminal can be followed by the same token. This will be easier to understand with an example. So in this case, you see that we have x followed by y. And x is optional a, so it's either empty or a. And y is a or b. So say you're here and you are seeing the token a. And of course, we are taking k equal 1. So you're here, you're seeing a. Should the a match x for this alternative? Or should x be matched to empty and then a is going to go to y? Well, the algorithm cannot decide that. And this is a first follow conflict. So, how do we avoid this conflict? We'll focus on first first conflicts here. The way we do it is by left factoring, which is to factor out the common part at the start of two choice alternatives. So here's a very concrete example, which is for a Java grammar. So you have this in-class declaration rule, and it defines a choice between field declarations and method declarations. Now, both of these start with the same prefix, which is a bunch of modifiers. So this could be public, final, static, etc. A type for the methods that's the return type, and an identifier, which is the field or the method name. And then they have different suffixes here, which are an optional uh, initializer, or for the methods, the parameter list in a body. So what we do is that we extract the suffix and we put it in front of the choice. And then we transform the choice. So now that it's a choice between the suffixes, so what's left after we remove the prefix. So this should be simple enough to understand. This is not LL because both field and method declaration can start by the same prefixes, so the same tokens. But this is LL because now everything is part of the same rule and then only the suffix is different and it's always going to be different because here the first token is in open parenthesis whereas here the first token is either equal or semicolon. So left factoring is not great if you are using plain syntax trees. Plain syntax trees is when you get a parse tree that follows the rules of the grammar. So in that case, you would get actually the prefix and the suffix coded into your tree. It also makes it a bit harder to build the abstract syntax tree, but that depends on the tool that you are using and how it works to build syntax tree. So it's hard to comment in general. Left factoring can also be useful for peg performance. This will work in peg, but it will cause duplicated work sometimes. Say you are trying to parse a method, well, first you have to try to parse a field, which means you have to parse the whole prefix before noticing that, oh, actually it's a paren, so it's not a field declaration. So then you need to backtrack, try the method declaration, and reparse the whole prefix again. So you're wasting work, basically. And in this case, it might be useful to left factor to improve peg performance. Here's a question that you might have. We've seen that uh, LL parsers only look at a, a single character, or I should say symbol or token. And depending on that, they take the next step. So isn't that exactly what we did for regular expressions with deterministic finite automaton? And uh, the answer is no, it's not quite the same. Uh, and in fact, LL grammars, they can handle central recursion. So remember the examples with the nested parentheses. The difference is that regular grammars, they are parsed with O1 space. So the only piece of memory that you have in a deterministic finite automaton is the current state in the automaton. LL1, on the other hand, is implemented by top-down recursive descent. 
and so it uses on space and the end space here is the call stack and this is the extra memory that we need to recurse and to implement central recursion it's also rated remember that Context free grammar can be parsed with the ND PDA, so a non deterministic pushdown automata. Actually, LL1 grammar can be parsed with a deterministic pushdown automata. And so a deterministic pushdown automata is just like a finite automaton, but it also has a stack that it can use. And the stack, again, that's the ON space. If you're going to play with L grammars, there's a very, very great resource online, which is called Gramophone. And Gramophone is a tool in which you can type grammars and it will tell you a lot of things about them. It will tell you is the, if the grammar is LL. And if the grammar is not LL, it will tell you what the conflicts are. So indeed, next time we're going to talk about LR parsing, which you'll see is quite more complicated than L parsing, but it's also uh, much more interesting. See you next time and take care.